coming up on Arirang News. Medical professors at South Korea's major hospitals will decide by tomorrow whether to collectively hand in their resignations to join the ongoing walkout of the trainee doctors. President Yoon song yeol vows to take transportation in South Korea's Jeollanamdo province to a new level by building a high-speed railroad and a Korean version of the Autobahn. South Korea and the U.S. hold live fire drill with tanks and armored vehicles as part of efforts to bolster combat readiness amid the North's escalating threats. This marks the end of this year's 11-day combined military exercise between Seoul and Washington. The Freedom Shield. Good evening. It's 9 p.m. here in Seoul. Thank you for joining us on Arirang News. Professors at medical schools in South Korea are currently holding a meeting about whether to hand in their resignations against the government's plan to increase the number of doctors. This is triggering concerns about a worsening shortage of doctors, as most trainee doctors in the country have already walked out. Our Song Yujin starts us off. There is only a day left for medical school professors to determine whether to collectively hand in their resignations. The Medical Professors Association of Korea, made up of professors from 33 med schools, began holding an online meeting at 8 p.m. Thursday to deliberate on this decision. They say this will be their way of showing support and safeguarding junior doctors and med school students who have chosen to walk out or take leave in protest against the government's plan to expand the med school quota. This is raising concerns over a deepening medical crisis as many concurrently serve as doctors in hospitals. The government is trying to prevent any resignations by the professors, but has also made it clear that it will complete its reforms of the health care system. Reducing numbers of doctors in the past due to fiscal pressures, when we should, have been increasing them, has made the current reform more challenging. The government will complete health care reform to safeguard lives and health, avoiding past mistakes. Meanwhile, amidst the plan to increase medical school enrollment by 2,000 students starting next year, it has been reported that the government is considering allocating 20 percent of the new quota to the capital region, including Seoul, and 80 percent to the rest of the country. Also, to address regional disparities in health care and strengthen essential medical services such as in pediatrics and obstetrics and gynecology, the government will push for a reduction in people's dependence on the so-called Big Five hospitals in Seoul. We'll bolster local health care to ensure timely treatment for all illnesses, from mild to severe. The government will innovate by developing small but strong hospitals and improve networking among them to address the abnormal over on the capital region. The government will increase financial support to hospitals in vulnerable areas and elevate regional hospitals to the level of those in the capital region. Song Yujin, Arirang News. Shifting gears, President Yoon song yeol pledges to take transportation in South Korea's southwestern Jeollanamdo province to a new level by building a high-speed railroad and a Korean version of Autobahn. His remarks come while holding another policy discussion with citizens there, promising regional growth. Our correspondent Kim do has the details. 2.6 trillion Korean won or around 2 billion U.S. dollars was pledged to build South Korea's version of Germany's Autobahn, an expressway without a speed limit to connect Jeollanamdo province's Yeongam and the city of Gwangju. The announcement came from President Yoon song yeol on Thursday as he visited the province to hold a policy discussion on the region's growth and said better transportation infrastructure is needed. Yoon 
He also promised a faster rail system that connects Iksan in Jeollabukdo province to the southern coastal city of Yeosu in Jeollanamdo with an investment of more than $750 million. And as the province's Kongun County is also a part of the space cluster, with it being home to the nation's only space rocket launch pad, Yoon promised a swift completion of the first commercial rocket launch site in the area. In addition, a center for commercializing rocket launch technology will be created to foster more private companies. In the meantime, as the province is well known for its agricultural and seafood industries, President Yoon spoke of his vision to host AI-based technology and smart farm technology to foster those industries further. As for seafood, one of the rising stars in South Korea's food exports is kim or dried seafood, the main ingredient in the internationally popular Korean food kimbap. Exports of kim surpassed 1 trillion won last year for the first time and 78% of all kim comes from the region. One local business owner who has been exporting the item has asked for more support. If the country can create an agency to oversee Kim industry development and give it a bit more attention, our Kim industry could also enter the entire global market, just like the $7.5 billion Norwegian salmon industry. <laughs> In addition, President Yoon also heard about what he could do to foster the nation's animation industry as he seeks to start something called the K-Disney Project, with Suncheon City aiming to become the nation's base for it. Kim Do-hye, Arirang News. While Pyongyang brags about its new weapon, Seoul and Washington here in the south have jointly staged live fire drills using their own battle tanks and armored vehicles. This wraps up the annual Freedom Shield exercise, which South Korea and the U.S. have been conducting over the past 11 days. Our defense correspondent Choi Min-jung was at the site and files this report. A ground-shaking blast followed by another seconds later. The combined forces of South Korea and the U.S. launched explosives one after another to swiftly advance into hypothetical enemy-controlled territory. A U.S. unmanned aerial vehicle flies over the enemy's territory to locate the target. Then, a K-30 gun and missile air defense system detects the enemy's aerial assets using its radar and blasts over 300 rounds of shells to shoot them down. This weapon can detect an enemy located within 21 kilometers and automatically fires once its target comes within the 3-kilometer range. 18 K1A2 main battle tanks and two K21 infantry fighting vehicles quickly advance into the enemy's territory and precisely strike the preset targets. Engineers from South Korea and the U.S. then fire multiple mine-clearing line charges to clear paths for tanks and vehicles through minefields and other obstacles. After shooting more than 200 rounds of shells, the Allies successfully conquer the enemy's base. The training took place on Thursday in South Korea's border city of Potton as the annual Seoul Washington Freedom Shield exercise came to an end. The drills involved some 340 soldiers from South Korea's Capital Mechanized Infantry Division and the 2nd Infantry Division, a major U.S. ground combat unit in Korea. Through this training, we were able to fully equip ourselves with combined combat capabilities that can overwhelm the enemy. As you saw, they successfully executed their missions, and it showed that we are ready as a combined force to take on any challenges that we face here. Uh, that is the important part of what we do and why we train together regularly, to show that we are ready as a united front. Che <laughs> Ming-dang, Arirang News, Putan. In other news, Moscow is reportedly in close communication with Seoul to work on possibly granting consular access to a South Korean missionary currently detained in Russia on espionage charges. Our foreign affairs correspondent Pei Eun-ji tells us more.
Russia's foreign ministry has said it's in close contact with the South Korean government on the issue of a South Korean man detained in Moscow on espionage allegations. Its ministry spokesperson said Wednesday local time that at the request of the South Korean embassy in Moscow, the possibility of consular access to the detained South Korean man named Pei Won-sun is being worked on. The question is how ready they are for mutually respectful dialogue to discuss these complex issues. And most importantly, everything depends on the country's focus on effectively resolving these complex issues in a mutually respectful manner. In response, South Korea's foreign ministry said Wednesday that it has been providing consular assistance to the man since the government became aware of the arrest. It added that it has been communicating with Russian authorities on the matter and that the South Korean ambassador to Russia met with a senior official at Russia's foreign ministry the day before. We will continue to engage in necessary communications with Russia so that our citizen can safely return home to his family as soon as possible. This comes after Russia's state-run media outlet TASS News Agency reported Monday that a South Korean was arrested in Vladivostok earlier this year for handing over classified information to foreign intelligence agencies. According to TASS, he was transferred to Moscow from Vladivostok in late February and is now being held in Lefortovo prison, where a court ordered his detention to be extended until June 15th. Sources in Vladivostok have reportedly said the man was a religious worker and that he had been indirectly supporting North Korean laborers working in Russia, helping them escape. This is the first reported case involving a South Korean national, but it's just the latest in a series of arrests of foreigners made by the Russian authorities, including Evan Gerskovich, an American Wall Street Journal reporter who was detained in Russia last March. Peunz, Arirang News. In the U.S., Lawmakers across the aisle came together at the House of Representatives to vote in favor of a bill to ban TikTok, which they claim challenges American security threats. Yet, despite their claims, the bill faces an uncertain future at the Senate. Yi sung explains. With overwhelming support, the U.S. House of Representatives on Wednesday voted 352 to 65 in favor of passing a bill that would ultimately ban the use of a popular video sharing platform, TikTok. American lawmakers have been calling for a ban on the platform, arguing that it poses a national security threat due to the fact that it's run by Chinese-based parent company ByteDance, and the Chinese government could use information gathered through the platform to its advantage. Wisconsin Republican Representative Mike Gallagher, who is one of the co-sponsors of the bill, stressed before the vote that the bill forces TikTok to break up the Chinese Communist Party. TikTok is a threat to our national security because it is owned by ByteDance, which does the bidding of the Chinese Communist Party. We know this because ByteDance leadership says so and because Chinese law requires it. This bill therefore forces TikTok to break up with the Chinese Communist Party. If the bill is passed by the Senate and goes into effect, ByteDance must sell TikTok's U.S. business rights within six months. If the sale fails, Google Play, Apple App Store and other app platforms will be banned from providing TikTok for download. The bipartisan vote by the House comes despite former President Donald Trump's opposition to banning the popular app. Trump had argued that banning TikTok would lead to the growth of Facebook, which he criticized as an enemy of the people. White House Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre said in a briefing on board Air Force One on Wednesday that the top office is pleased to see progress on the bill. She added that the legislation is important as the U.S. continues to address threats posed by foreign technology services that put U.S. national security and the personal information of Americans at risk. The press secretary further emphasized that the White House wants to make sure the bill is on the strongest legal footing possible. However, it remains to be seen whether the bill can be passed with as much support in the Senate. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer has been noncommittal about bringing it to the floor for a vote, while other lawmakers vow to oppose the passage of the bill. Lee seung Arirang News.
South Korea's tech exports last month saw an on-year surge of nearly 30 percent, marking an increase for four months in a row, mainly thanks to the recovery in the semiconductor industry. Our economics correspondent Lee Soo-jin has more. A strong chip performance was once again behind the increase in South Korea's tech exports. Data released by the Trade Ministry on Thursday shows that ICT exports in February rose 29.1 percent on year to a little over 16.5 billion U.S. dollars. This marks the fourth consecutive month that the nation's ICT exports recorded an on-year increase, and it's the second straight month that exports increased by double digits. The ministry attributed the growth mostly to a robust performance in the chip sector. Semiconductor exports last month surged nearly 63 percent on-year, recording growth in the double digits for four straight months. Memory chip exports were especially high, increasing by triple digits on the back of increased demand for high-value-added products such as TVs and laptops. As for other tech exports, shipments of displays climbed more than 18 percent on-year as both OLED and LCD panel exports were up. And computer shipments also rose for the second consecutive month after entering positive territory for the first time in 19 months in January. But the mobile sector as a whole saw its exports tumble more than 21 percent despite the release of new smartphones such as the Samsung Galaxy S24 series due to a weakened global demand for mobile phone parts. By country, South Korea's exports to China, the nation's biggest destination for ICT exports, responsible for more than 40 percent, saw an on-year growth for the fourth consecutive month. Shipments to other nations such as Vietnam and the United States also rose, but there was a slump in exports to the European Union and Japan. Meanwhile, South Korea's ICT imports fell more than 6 percent to around $10 billion. Lee Soo-jin, Arirang News. South Korea is widely known as a global medical powerhouse for its advancement in the digital healthcare industry. To highlight this, Medical Korea 2024, a global healthcare and medical tourism conference, kicked off today to discuss what's worth noticing. Our correspondent Park Geun-woo was there. In an era of advanced technologies, including robotics and AI, the medical field is rapidly transforming by utilizing these technologies. And that allows people to gain access to digital health care more easily with lower barriers than before. As people face exposure to blue light and electromagnetic waves from mobile phones and computer screens, this digital kiosk allows you to easily take an eyesight test on your own using AI technology. Let me try it myself. Devices like this allow people to do medical checks conveniently, taking up less time and space. To showcase such devices, the Ministry of Health and Welfare is hosting Medical Korea 2024 in Seoul from Thursday, which also features various lectures and discussions under the theme, Connected Healthcare for All, A New Horizon Beyond Barriers. The conference aims to share insights into Korea's advanced medical technology and enhance perceptions of the country's excellence globally. At the event, a keynote speaker spoke about her ongoing collaborative plans in Korea. We have been collaborating very extensively with South Korea uh, doctors, hospitals, as well as various industry partners, not just in the medical space, but also in the IT space. Uh, and uh, we are rapidly expanding on that. Another keynote speaker also spoke about Korea's development in the digital healthcare field. And I would say, in many ways, Korea leads the world in their utilization of this robotic technology. He also mentioned some challenges remaining in the overall digital healthcare sector. You know, digital uh, capability, uh, I think, will be a new frontier uh, across healthcare. Uh, and there will be um, many policymakers and industry participants that will really need to come together to understand how to integrate these digital capabilities uh, into the environment. Over 50 speakers will participate in the conference up to Friday in sessions with global partners attending either in person or virtually. And alongside various business meetups during the two-day event, intergovernmental meetings will take place with countries including Mongolia, Paraguay and Turkmenistan to further bilateral cooperation in the healthcare industry. Park Geun-woo, 
Arirang News. For many, robots are no longer a new technology. They're already prevailing in various industries, but now they're becoming chefs. Our An Songjin explains why this isn't a half-baked idea. The robots are taking over. At least in kitchens, they are. This middle school in Seoul, South Korea, is the first to use robots in the process of cooking lunch. Rather than workers standing in front of steaming pots and pans, robots do it instead. Not only does it ensure consistency in taste and quality, but our chefs have also said that they are more satisfied as cooking has become more efficient and easier. Research has shown that being exposed to fumes in restaurant and cafeteria kitchens can lead to lung cancer. So the Seoul Metropolitan Office of Education introduced robots to improve the working environment for kitchen staff. These robots can rustle up various dishes such as soup, fried chicken and stir-fried vegetables. It's not just schools that are using them. Expressway rest areas are doing so as well. Robots here are a part of the autonomous process of putting the ingredients into a pan, cooking them on the stove, and then pouring them into a bowl. For example, it uses its arm to stir the noodles at a certain pace and move them to a bowl. It can make more than 10 different types of dishes and up to 200 dishes in an hour. Since our working environment has become much more pleasant and convenient than before, it's much more preferable to have these robots. It's like a mutual relationship for us. If the trial is successful at this rest area, the Expressway Corporation is looking to bring the so-called robot chefs to other rest areas in South Korea. Robots are a key aspect of the growing food tech market. Data from market research and strategy consulting firm Emergen Research shows that the global food tech market is going to expand from 220.3 billion U.S. dollars in 2019 to 342.5 billion dollars by 2027. The integration of robots in the food industry is expected to progress rapidly as it improves hygiene and quality in the kitchen. The problem is not that these robots are replacing people as workers, as the restaurant industry is already lacking in manpower. It's cooperation that's going to be needed. The Food and Agriculture Ministry has pledged to increase the budget for food tech to $48.6 million this year. An Songjin, Arirang News. The warm spring weather continues, but fine dust is also a problem in Seoul and other metropolitan areas. It's because smoke from overseas flowed in overnight. Tomorrow, the concentration of ultra-fine dust across the country will be bad all day long. The fine dust is expected to continue until Saturday and then be resolved with strong winds along with rain from Sunday. Wearing a protective mask is necessary. However, the weather will be as mild as today. Seoul will start the morning at 4 degrees Celsius. During the day, the temperature will rise to around 15 degrees, widening the daily temperature difference. With this temperature swing, please take care of your health. Tomorrow morning, we'll start off at 3 in Daegu and Gwangju, Daejeon, 2 degrees. Daily highs will move up to 20 in Daegu, Gyeongju, 21 degrees. The daytime temperature in Seoul will rise to 17 degrees this weekend, seeing a high temperature phenomenon. However, there is rain forecast in many places, starting with the Cholado provinces in Jeju Island during the afternoon this Saturday and Sunday. That's all for Korea. Here are the weather conditions around the world. Well, that is all for this newscast tonight. Thank you for watching. 
We'll be back at 10 p.m. with the AI Headline News. Good night.